smart and intelligent is being white, what is being black? For you young guys who are struggling in school and, and in life for that matter, I understand what you're going through. At one time I was, I, I had a lot of hard times growing up and you know, really big family and I, I struggled a lot with you know, social things. I was getting in a lot of trouble, but I think it was just because I was expressing myself, I guess. I was doing the work, but you know, not too well. I didn't devote enough time into it. So, you know, it was like half done or I finished it, but you know, answers were wrong. But, you know, I just had to stop that. One of the most troubling problems in America is the persistent underachievement of African-American males. While many attain high academic honors, far too many others, though intellectually capable, do not succeed in school. The consequences can be devastating, resulting in dropouts, unfulfilled potential, and lost opportunities. My grade point was low. I really didn't know it in the middle school because they really didn't tell us. And Ms. McGovern tells me that it was a 1-4, right? And, you know, I got, a, I got a C in English, and I was getting Ds and everything. You know, and I really didn't pay much attention to that because I really didn't see my grade average and see what I was doing in school. So it just really didn't matter to me. I was thinking about girls and everything. At Shaker Heights High School, the Minority Achievement Committee, known informally as the Mac Scholars Program, was initiated, constructed, and implemented by high-achieving black male students. MAC stands for the Minority Achievement Committee, and about six years ago, it was uh, brought about by some seniors here who were unhappy about the achievement of the black males in the school. So they went to Ms. McGovern and to the academic um, committee and discussed about, you know, why don't we, you give us a chance to talk to them since they won't listen to our teachers. So basically what we try to do is, from the, they send kids over from the middle school, and the freshmen that come in, the ones that have like low GPAs are placed in the MAC program. And what we try to do is give them some leadership, some guidance. What you are about to see is an effective school-based, student-initiated and student-centered program focusing on reversing the downward spiral of minority male achievement. It is important to note that these Shaker Heights MAC scholars are not all from affluent, privileged families. Approximately half of the scholars are from single-parent homes, and many of them live in the same neighborhoods as the potential scholars. Seeing you guys, seeing some of you kids that I've helped, seeing some of you kids running on the streets when I was younger, now seeing you here taking care of business. I mean, there's nothing, nothing better in the world seeing you guys make yourself better men. As upperclassmen, the MAC scholars are role models, mentors, and academic coaches. And we, help, we try to get them to understand that, you know, you can come to us on a one-to-one -one basis. And we have had most of the teachers that they have in ninth grade, so we're able to help them with work, um, any homework that they need. And then sometimes they have situations at home that we've probably been through or are going through, so we're able to discuss it with them. So it's like a mentoring program from us to them. The number one goal, which they are single-minded about and, uh, and have been all along, even through some attempts to distract them from this, um, is improving the academic achievement of these ninth graders. They, are, they understand they are bright kids. These are not kids who cannot do the work. Um, some v extremely bright kids in this group doing DNF work. Uh, so the number one goal is to, is to pass on to them the tools that they themselves have developed um, to improve schoolwork and to try to get them to buy into it, to internalize it, to use it, and to, um, to become learners. The task of the scholars is to guide these young, capable students through the critical passages that will lead the way to becoming successful students. The scholars must first introduce and define the fundamental tools of learning, pass on their understanding of how to use them, and inspire the younger students to put them into practice. In a sense, the potential scholars are in training to become learners and achievers. The thing with MAC leaders is that they're leaders. 
by being leaders, uh, they have to uh, recognize that they are going to be, um, first of all, in the community in many cases. They're going to be working with kids here at the high school, and they're part of showing leadership skills and qualities or of being a leader is being assertive and being able to communicate with everyone. You got to separate your lifetime into, it's like sections. It's the funny part, the joking part, the have fun part. It's the being serious part right here, the everything down, trying to make yourself presentable, trying to make yourself the best person you can be. And it's the other part right here, and that's like the emotional with family, loved ones, and all that stuff. <coughs> Them is the three different parts of life that y'all need to learn how to separate right now. And they decided in one of their planning meetings that at the beginning of every single meeting from that point on to the to this point today, that um, they would they would uh, teach the kids how to shake hands. And so at the beginning of every meeting, the kids file out of their rows and they shake hands with all the Mac scholars. And if they do not do a firm hand, handshake and look them in the eye, they do it over again. And they do it until they get it right. And um, the second thing that they uh, did uh, was write a pledge. And so at the beginning of every meeting after the handshake, each the, the entire group stands up and, and recites the pledge. I am an African American, and I pledge to uphold the name and image of the African American man. And I pledge to uphold the name and image of the African American man. I will do so by striving for academic excellence. The MAC meetings are structured by an agenda created by the MAC leaders and the academic advisor. And we just met once a week or once every two weeks, and we started to develop sort of a skeleton of, of uh, structure. Um, and I, did mo I mostly listened to them, how they would put this program together, how they would structure it, uh, what they would do when they met with the kids. It was, it was uh, important that they understand, which an adult understands, and young people often don't, that you don't go in and wing it with this group of kids, that you have to have a plan and an agenda and a program that you're going to follow, that you have to have goals, and that it has to be structured. Now, just a few minutes ago, we said the pledge. You know, I'm an African-American man, and I pledge to uphold the name and the image of the African-American man. What does that mean to you? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you have to think, there is no certain thing that defines whether, what it is to be white or what it is to be black. Now, I'm sure any of you, let me just throw this out on the floor, but what do you think society views um, the black man as being? Criminals. Exactly. Right. You said criminals, drug dealers, rapists. During the meeting, it is determined that the co-leaders would introduce the topic to the potential scholars, and the other scholars would join in as the discussion gets underway. One meeting was devoted to the showing of a tape of Dr. Ben Carson who is uh, the head of, of neurosurgery, pediatric neurosurgery at Johns Hopkins and coming out of a very rough background. And then another, they, they watched that tape of his life and then another meeting was devoted to talking about things that they got from that tape. Uh, that happened to be a very powerful meeting. Well, right now we want to talk about what you got from that tape and the scholars will talk about what they got from the tape. When I saw the tape last week, what I got out of it was that this man was, he grew up as, you know, a young black male in this country, and y'all know that wasn't really the easiest thing to do. And he had to overcome a lot of stuff, had to overcome being talked about just because he was smart. He got talked about, you know, it ain't all that cool to be smart or whatever. So what I got out of that tape basically was, if you stick with what you got to do and concentrate on what you got to do and don't worry about uh, what other people got to say, then you go get somewhere in life. But if you letting somebody else run your life, by what they say about what they do or what they do to you, then you ain't gonna get nowhere. You gotta pick who your friends are because when he started to rise himself up, it was other people that tried to bring him down by telling him that he wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing, which was acting black. And I like what he said when he said, well, if what I'm doing is acting white, what is being black? Because you can't define being white or black by how you do in school. So you have, and, and like I was saying before, you have to choose who your friends are because the people who are bringing you down aren't your friends. All black men can achieve because he definitely had obstacles with his parents splitting up. He was getting bad grades, ridiculed, and, uh, but he set his mind to what he wanted and he achieved. And it was hard for him too, but we can all do it. You should always go after what you feel is right because I know when he was uh, 
hanging around with, out with the other boys. He didn't really know that that was right. He just wanted to be a part of everybody else. And then after he got, after he started realizing that that wasn't what was right, he got back to his uh, school work and all that and started getting the good grades that he was supposed to get. Time and opportunity is provided for the younger students to interact with them throughout the meeting. They ensure this by asking questions of the students or requesting that someone volunteer to comment on the topic under discussion. In addition to the academic achievement, I think they're trying to develop young men with social skills and academic skills and the other skills they're going to need to be successful. Appropriate dress is part of the structuring of the program in school. The scholars wear shirts and ties, which enhances the seriousness of their purpose when meeting with the younger students and helps establish them as role models. If you don't have a role model, you know, some kids think they don't need role models and some kids think they do. But if there are any kids in the MAC program that think they usually, through the meetings, they start looking at, at us as role models. I mean, I've had kids walk up to me and uh, say, you know, when are you coming back to the language arts lab to help me out? When are you going to, you know, when can I sit down with you and talk to you about my grades and, and the different classes and what can I do about this teacher? So I think role models play a big role in their life because in middle school they didn't have anybody to really look up to and say, you know, well, I need help. I need something, somebody to stand up for me and actually tell me how to do this and some guidance. So I think role models are very, I mean, it's very, very important in their lives and along with our lives, you know, we, we really need it really badly. When I think about the Mac scholars that have gone through the program, they have a goal. They have an objective. Their goal and objective is to work with kids. It's a philosophy that goes something like, we teach best what we need to learn most. We're giving kids an opportunity to teach skills that they have found to be successful in helping them learn. At the same time, they're relearning those skills, which is just in causing them to improve academically for themselves. The MAC leaders offer everything from recommendations for improving schoolwork to one-on-one -on -one support for students. The MAC leaders also recognize the vital importance of their parents' involvement in their education. My parents always stress to me the value of education, and without it, you just don't have anything in, in their life. The number one reason that they were achievers was because there was someone at home who would not let them be anything other than that. That when they came home from their honors or AP classes and said such things as, and I quote, um, the white kids are smarter than I am and I can't do this work. The answer at home was, you are not changing. You are staying in the class. They are not smarter. You'll work harder. If you feel like you're going to have more trouble getting it, you'll work harder. The MAC scholars conduct the meetings without direct faculty supervision. Although few have prior experience in leadership roles, they are able to hold the attention and elicit the participation of ninth graders with a history of low achievement and, in some cases, serious school behavior issues. I know myself, my grades is pretty good, and I'm scared, man. I mean, I'm scared of going out there in the world with myself because it's like, I know it's going to be pressure. People are going to be trying to get you, and you got to be ready for that. People are going to be wanting to tackle you or take you down just by the fact because you're black. Beyond attempting to raise grades, the program does something equally worthwhile. It raises ambitions. An effort is made to publicly acknowledge and celebrate achievement in the large meetings. What I want, what I want everybody to do now is just explain the, a few of the people that stood up and what they did to get their good grades. Yes. Let's probably support real quick. Y'all, the ones that were standing, keep standing. What I did to get my grades up was uh, just really concentrate on my um, studies because I didn't play sports this year. I was gonna um, go off to football and everything, but I mean. School was more important to me because I was kind of scared because I had a 1.5 in the middle school and I have a 2.9. So, um. <laughs> without me playing sports and, you know, concentrating on things that weren't really important, really helped me out. And um, coming to this MAC program really gave me, like, the, um, the you know, um, the encouragement that I needed to um, make my grades. Only thing we can do is motivate them. I mean, but we can't take care of their business for them. We could just keep telling them over and over again. But if they don't do it, then, you know, nothing changes. But you can tell that they're not motivated. And that's what we're here for, to motivate them. And then you can see it. When they're getting the motivation from us, you can see it. You can tell they get brighter, their eyes, their face, they, they light up. I thought I want to be just like them because they were just like, 
the best people in the world to me right about then because they were making the grades, they had the girls. I mean, they were smart. <laughs> That's just something that I really want to be. The scholars determined that an award ceremony would bring closure to their program at the end of the school year. A Mac scholar acts as master of ceremonies, and all other scholars have a role in the program. It is their opportunity to publicly congratulate and praise the younger students to whom they have devoted their time, offered their wisdom and understanding, and imparted a sense of pride in personal achievement. And I'm going to leave you with this. My father one time when I was, one, one summer he was bringing me home from high school, from, from college, and he, one time one of his workers, my dad owns a contractor business, he says, he says, you know, this guy keeps, you know, asking me, Will, he keeps saying, Mr. Knight, when you going, when you going to give me the lead? You know, when you going to give me some leadership role in, in your job? My father said, you know, he, he just didn't even acknowledge that comment to him because he looked at me and said, how many times has your coach ever said, I'm going to give you the lead? I know your coach just said, you have to take the lead. And I'm challenging all of you not to ask anybody to give you the lead, but go out and take the lead. Okay, now it's time for what all, everyone's been waiting for, um, the gold medal winner. Um, this individual brought his grade point average from, if I'm not mistaken, a 1.4 or 3 from the middle school. Um, he now has a 2.9. Um, actually, he, is, he had the highest of everyone's grade point average here today. Um, it was a small fraction below a 3.0, so it is actually a B average. Um, without further ado, I would like to introduce to you Raji Welsh Bay. Will everybody please stand? The scholars are steadfast in their belief that they can make a difference, and in doing so, restore hope in the younger students that they will, indeed, have futures that hold promise. <laughs>